out of the box or out of the wall, whatever you want to call it, we have <laughs> trick. So, did I just do that trick absolutely god awful? We are about to find out because are you going to be tricked or are you going to be treated? Sure. <laughs> Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon reviewing trick. What's it about? Pretty simple premise. I believe in 2006 or 2007, there was a horrible, horrible, brutal massacre by this guy named Patrick something. Our nickname, Trick. And he killed out, I want to say, six to seven people at a party. At the hospital, handcuffed. He gets away. The cops shoot him. Pew, 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 pew. He falls in the river. That's like 30 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, whatever. They're like, he's got to be dead. But there's no body. Is he dead? But now, every year, 2007, 2008, and I want to say 2009 is kind of where it goes from, massacres happen. And they're like, it's the same guy. It's got to be the same guy. And the Mike Epps character is like, that is the same guy. But you have other people like Ellen Adar and Christina Reyes is like, nah, it can't be that guy. There's no way. He was in the water for so long. And now, all of a sudden, we got to figure out who this murderer is. And there's going to be a twist at the end where you're like, oh, shit. Or you're more of like, I've seen movies like this too many freaking times. So, do you like this film? No, I'm sorry. It just felt very cheap, very self-centered. And just, it thought it was way smarter than it wanted and needed to be. So, while we talk about that, we are going to go through the positives first. I think the positives are the kills. When the kills do occur, they're pretty bloody and pretty brutal. This is the director for My Bloody Valentine. If you haven't seen the My Bloody Valentine 3D with Jensen Ackles, it's actually a pretty good movie. Like, it is very bloody. Same goes with here. There are some solid kills. There's one with kills the cross that goes through the windshield. That was pretty brutal and pretty epic. So when you want some good bloodshed, some good knife wounds, some good decapitations, you're going to get this in this movie. Also, the actor, I think Mike Epps is probably the only standout. Like, he knew that he was a cop on a vengeance. Everyone else felt like it was overacting. Or, like, Jamie Kennedy. I, I don't know what he was trying to do in this film. Same with Tom Atkins. Like, he's supposed to be the grumpy old man. But you're just like, yeah. <coughs> and that was just sneezing. But, yeah, he was basically the grumpy old man. And you're just like, what, what are you giving to the screen? What are you giving to the character? And you're giving nothing to the character. Everything else in this movie... We've seen it a million times before. It's eye-rolling at the very end where it's like, actually, this is happening. And actually, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do some spoilers in three, two, one, reverse order. You know for a fact it is not one person doing it. Because when it comes to the year two of the murders, they're like, you know what? This guy's a hero. We need to make sure you keep his legacy. So you know for a fact, you know what? There's going to be more people involved. And when you know who is involved, what do we when some characters come on screen you're like, that's going to be one of the killers? That's one of the killers. It's one of those things where you add characters to a movie where it's not like B-roll character, but it's one of those characters that's like, has a stupid line here, a stupid line here, or does something interesting here, interesting here. You're like, you're doing that for a reason. You don't think you're, it's not that smart. You're What you're doing is not smart because you know for a fact that's going to have something to the end of the movie. That, that person's gonna add them to the end of the movie. It's the same way. You're like, that cop's one of the killers. That teenager is for sure a killer. That doctor is for sure a killer. And at the very end, you're just like, yeah, I understand it completely. And this goes to the level of Scream 6 when it comes to people getting stabbed and twisted, stabbed and twisted. And all of a sudden, at the end, they're like, I just came out of the coffin and now I'm helping you guys. You're just like, what the fuck? You should be dead. Yes, I know that you can't kill that guy because that guy was literally with you the whole time spectrum of the movie but it's like come on like really is that really necessary to keep that person alive but again this is one of the movies where i was like you know i bought it a long time ago i finally watched it am i gonna sell it on ebay yes unfortunately this is an ebay seller i truly wish in the look in the look of the movie let's put it that way you know how you watch some movies and it looks like a professional movie this one it didn't look grainy but the camera movement and maybe the lenses and the cinematography just felt like a student-esque style of movie on some elements. Like some elements, you're just like, what kind of shot is that? But then some elements, 
where you get that swinging cross draw. That's pretty cool. And when we're talking about the decapitations as well, there's some of them where you're like, that's a fucking mannequin head, yo. Like, that is not even remotely close to a real freaking head. So there's stuff like that where you're just like, what are we trying to do here? Like, at least put a little bit of effort into the blood or gore. I mean, I guess I could give it a positive because there was no CGI blood. It was all practical effects. And like I said, I'm a sucker, sucker of sucker, my suckers of practical effects. So even though I'm like, yeah, that's a straight up fucking mannequin. I mean, but Terrifier 2 was mannequin 2, but it was more just realistic. But of course, there's the ears point in between. If you hear my microwave, I'm so sorry. But overall, treat it is not a treat for the eyes. Like I said, there's some good kills, and Mike Epps is really the only actor that really plays the part well. Everything else, the directing, the story, the look of the movie just felt cheap. And the twist and turn at the end, it's like you've got to have these characters that are like a little bit smarter, or at least like, why is this person in the movie? You know for a fact this person's going to do something at the very end of the movie, and it's very, very predictable. Because, and then, okay, in the last, and the guy that gets stabbed, basically, that's in the hospital. What the fuck was that? Because that's the other thing where you're like, why is this guy rolling his wheelchair around randomly throughout the back of the screen or back of the movie or in the background? You know, for a fact, it's, it's like, you gotta be stupid if you're like, they keep showing this guy in the wheelchair. He has an inmate outfit. Like, he's an electrical chair for the Halloween. You're like, they, they keep showing him. And they showed him again. And they showed him again. And they showed him again. So at a point, the audience should be smart enough to be like, something is up with that motherfucker. It's not worth your time, unfortunately. So Trick will receive a 2 out of 5 of food taunts, which goes at 40%. Man, I was in the zone. Do I give it a 30% or 40%? But I wasn't mad with this movie because I was entertained with the blood and guts and the gore when it was happening. And even though the story was simplistic and you know what was happening, it was it was a short movie. Where you're just like, yeah, I didn't hate this, but I didn't like it either. And there's this weird, you know, maze scene where you're just like, why are we adding these fucking characters? Anyway, now I'm just rambling. Let's see what the critics new scores gave this one. The critics a 36%, audience score a 28%. 28 critics over 100, audience, critics and senses. Fast-paced savagery and a memorable twist aren't enough to make up for tricks slavy, sla slavish? devotion to superior slasher films of the past that's a memorable twist according to the critics are these critics fucking stupid are they stupid i'm gonna say yes these motherfuckers are stupid anyway 40 36 28 chase hawk with the blue food like comment subscribe one more thing blue ton tokyo blue ton thank you a great day now, i think that's what happens is once you get to a point where you watch almost way too many movies it's hard for these twists to be like, oh, shit. But it's not a lot of movies surprise me anymore. And that's kind of a bummer. But anyway, I don't care if you're watching this today, tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now, or a year from now. I love every single one of you. And like I said, is this a horrendous movie? No. But if it's something that you're just like, oh, for shits and giggles, curious, I don't think it's going to hurt you whatsoever. But I love all of you. Thank you.